Okay, welcome everybody. And as announced via email, today we will start speaking about the exam and I will give you some information about that <coughs> before we turn to our topic of today, which will be language. Okay, so the exam itself will be uh, a 90 minute exam, you will see in a moment. Uh, Yesterday or a few days before I put up online a document called marking criteria so everything we speak about today will be in detail in that document as well so it's somewhat redundant and you can check upon that and again if the recordings work right this bit of the lecture will be online as well. <coughs> okay so um, it will be a 90 minute exam, one and a half hours will be an unseen exam and it will consist of two parts and uh, they will be roughly 45 minutes each and the first part will be multiple choice questions and um, they are designed so that they cover every topic which we covered here as well. There will be between three and six questions per lecture per topic. Uh, we will have here. So this is really to, to test for the breadth of knowledge. <clears throat> and the second part then will be around six uh, open questions. So where you have to produce something yourself and the answers will be of different length. However, it won't be like full essay questions or something. And you also have to answer all of them. So there is no choosing among those. We will see examples in a moment. And each of the two parts contributes 50% to the final mark. <clears throat> so what is the relevant material? And I think I mentioned that already in the beginning. So of course everything which is taught in the lecture. And you know that when you missed one you can always catch up on YouTube. And uh, the essential reading, the textbook by Fernand Gobet, Foundations of Cognitive Psychology. And the textbook there are a few chapters which we will not have covered here and these chapters are not relevant for the exam it's only the lectures uh, or the chapters which we covered here okay so to give you a list again um, we are here now language part one so we did more than half of that and here are the chapters what it refers to in the textbook um, you will see that after language we will start having like two different topics in each lecture and in the textbook you will see that the chapters are shorter as well so we won't cover these topics in so much depth because they're not that central to cognitive psychology. On the last session we will speak about executive control and again have like this presentation the exam preparation so that you can have uh, some more questions if you want to. The executive control topic uh, is not in the Gobe textbook and therefore it won't be relevant for the exam. 
So let's have a look at a few example questions um, for the multiple choice part. And that could, for instance, be something like, what is the instance theory of automaticity? And you may get uh, four different choices, uh, like the view that automaticity is a transition from general algorithm used to solve problems to memory retrieval of past solutions, uh, solutions chunking, the view that learning involves instances, the view that some tasks can be, become automatic in an instant, and some further options. There is always only one right answer to that, and um, yeah, it's, it's of that type. And usually there's not much more text in the questions like this. I know that in some exams you have a multiple choice question which is like half a page or something where you spend a lot of time reading. They will all be in this rather short format so that when you know the answer you can really go very quickly through them. Another example is who developed the theory of working memory and again you will have four different options of that and I picked that question because often there is some uh, question about how much will there be questions about years and names and particular studies and stuff like that. And in general, there won't be too much on that. There may be questions like this. Um, on very central theories or something like that and then it will be usually on names. There won't be a question like in which year was this theory proposed or something and then like was it 1978, 74, 71 or 65 as four options. Um, I won't ask that. It's maybe about names and in this case uh, Badley and Hitch develop this theory of working memory which is one of the most central theories in cognitive psychology. So these are a few names you need to know. Um, I won't ask about some specific studies or, or something like that. <clears throat> okay, as I said there is only one correct answer per, per question and yeah, you know these answer sheets I think. Uh, make sure that you really fill out that circle. Don't just tick it or cross it or something like that but really fill that out. Um, it will be analyzed automatically by a computer software and every inclarity will then be looked at by us as markers um, but still when we are unsure then you may lose the point if you scribble too much around and we don't know what you actually wanted to pick, then that's a problem, of course. Okay, some example questions for the second part with the open questions. And this can really vary from extremely short and brief to uh, an answer which uh, can be a couple of paragraphs long. Uh, let's see some examples. <clears throat> so. For instance, it may be just an itemization, like name four different sensory modalities. And in this case, you could just write audition, vision, touch, smell, or any other four sensory modalities. And that could be sufficient already. Um, it may be that you have to provide like a brief definition and an example of that, uh, so that you only need one or a few sentences for that. So as an example, define semantic memory and provide one example. And an example answer might be, as a definition, semantic memory stores general knowledge about the world, including facts, meanings and concepts. And an example of semantic memory would be the fact that London is the capital of England. So that could be an answer to that question. <clears throat> okay. And finally, you may have questions uh, which may require a longer re response, something like describe the attenuator model of attention proposed by Treisman and discuss that in a little bit of detail. And I won't go, go through that answer, you have that on the slides, you have that in the marking criteria as well, so, but I think um, you get the idea of, of what we are looking for. <clears throat> and finally, um, there may be even some more complex questions uh, like describe the attenuator model of attention and compare to the early selection model proposed by broadband or discuss evidence in favor of it and against it or something like that. <clears throat> 
However, um, I'm never looking for a question which requires a full-length essay. And please keep in mind that I'm, of course, aware of the time you have available. So uh, if you think, oh, that's much too much, I can't possibly answer that in 45 minutes, then you are thinking too complicated, too long, so to say. So I, um, it is possible to give a good, perfect answer within to all the questions within 45 minutes. So otherwise, I wouldn't have done it like that. <clears throat> yeah, um, you may be actually asked uh, to have like a simple drawing or a sketch, or on the other hand, you're always welcome to use something like that to explain uh, your ideas or thoughts. For instance, if uh, you are asked about the working memory model of Bedley, then you may uh, sketch this thing of the central executive system and the slave system, the phonological loop, or something like that. So you can do that if you want to. And um, I will specify for every question how many points you will get for that question. And these points can be used as a rough guidance to actually how long uh, the expected answer is. Um, I think overall it will be pretty, pretty evident. <coughs> Okay, how will the grading be? So for the first part, um, it's just the percentage of correctly answered question translates directly into your mark and grade. So the first <coughs> part had 50 questions and suppose you answer 35 out of the 50 multiple choice questions, then you have uh, done 70% correct, so your mark is 70%, and if you look that up in the undergraduate student handbook, that translates into an A- minus grade. So that is pretty, pretty straightforward. With the open questions, um, as I said, the number of points uh, will be shown for each question, and um, for each question, there will be an unambiguous answer, correct answer, kind of a model answer. And um, what I will do is I will compare your answer to the things I have in my model answer. Do you have all the points there? You will get full marks. If something is missing, then you're deducted from that. So uh, we'll see an example in a moment. For instance, um, let's say, name six different sensory modalities and you can get one point for that question. And uh, then you can name any set of six sensory modalities. And the grading for that question might be, for instance, if you named five or six, you get one point. If you name four or less, you get no points. So there will be no discussion about that. That will be then the scheme according to which all are marked. And in the same way, you can do that for uh, definitions or things like that. So I have the other example, define semantic memory and provide one example. Such a question may give you two points. And we have seen this ex model answer with a definition. And you may get one point if the definition has been correct and another point if you provided a valid example of that. Okay. And then there will be the sum of all the points in the second part. And so, for instance, let's say you can get with all six questions a maximum of 25 points. And then you can just calculate how many percentage is each point. So uh, because part two is only 50% of the final grade, um, each point in the second part, there will then be two points, 2% two towards your final, final grade. So, as an example, if you got 13 out of 25 points, you achieved 52% in total, which is a C minus. So, and so the final exam grade is then just the average of the two. So, if you get 70% for first and 52% for the second part, the average is 61%, which is a B minus. So, that's the way how the exam will be graded and done. Okay, do you have any questions? In the marking criteria, which are online, which I don't have put that here uh, on the slides for obvious reasons, there are a few examples from last year's exam. So, and with some uh, model answers uh, given by students, which received uh, the full points, to give you some idea what other students have done. 
you can't use exams before last year exam as preparation because before that there was a different lecturer and uh, the exam was essay based so it's a different different type of exam now okay do you have any questions yes Sorry, 25? Is part two 25 Points. Yeah. Yes, uh, at the moment, yes. But the exam has not uh, gone, gone through external moderation, so it may be changed still. So at the moment, it looks like the second part will be 25 points, so one point will be 2%. But the logic stays the same, even if it changed to 30 points. You just see how many points do I got out of the maximum points achievable, that's your percentage, which you can translate into a grade. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, no, no. It will be during this general university exam period. I can't remember. Last year was in May or something. So. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> At the moment, they are roughly in the order of topics, which helps a little bit to set the context right of the question. Yeah. But usually, if there's some in clarity, then I try to provide a reference. For instance, let's say, in the context of language development, like, and then the question follows. So it should be straightforward. Any other questions? Okay, they are just.